Uh, welcome everybody um, to Northern Virginia Family Practice, our uh, monthly town hall. Great to have you with us. This is Cecily um, Habert, Dr. Habert, if, um, for those of you who don't know me. But um, this evening we um, have a fantastic talk uh, lined up for you and we have Dr. Haley Parker joining us. So I'm gonna um, introduce her here. Really quick before we get started, uh, Dr. Haley Parker is a state board licensed acupuncturist and herbalist in Virginia, Washington, D.C., Maryland, New Jersey, and Georgia. She received her master's degree in the science of oriental medicine from Southwest Acupuncture College in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Haley's own background as a Division I athlete contributed to her success in working with student athletes on the psychological, physical, and nutritional aspects of their sports training. Haley's passion for athletics and physical fitness continued to serve her as she worked as the resident acupuncturist at the prominent El Gancho, is it Gancho Racket Club? That was it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, racket and Fitness Club in Santa Fe before she joined the Princess Cruise Lines to travel the world for five years, which just sounds absolutely amazing to me. It was a blast. Over this, I can imagine. Over this time, she became extremely proficient at teaching the benefits of acupuncture. Um, to guests and jumpstarting their healing while they were also on vacation. For the past five years, she has worked for Palmer Care Chiropractic in two locations in Northern Virginia. Haley joined the Virginia University of Integrative Medicine, or VUIM. Or is it, do you say VUIM? Or yeah, yeah, we go by that because it's a mouthful to. Yeah, that's going to every time. Yeah, where, where she serves as the Director of Clinical Operations. She is also working towards her doctorate degree while serving at the UIM, where she plans to continue to teach and transform the curriculum at the doctorate level for future advances in integrative medicine, along with her business and community outreach programs. Haley is a pas is passionate about seeing her profession grow. Um, as a teacher and coach, Haley offers seminars and courses to her students and colleagues across the country, and we are thrilled to have her with us tonight. Um, so before we get started, um, Haley, we do have a, um, a special guest um, of ours, a mutual patient who should be on with us this evening, and he wanted to say a few words about um, how he got to know you and also how um, you've impacted his quality of life. So David is a patient of both uh, Dr. Parker's and mine. So we'll see if we can unmute him. Oh, there he is. Hi, David. Hi, hi, Dr. Dr. Harvard, Dr. Parker, how are you? We're good. Great. So glad thanks you could for, join us. <laughs> yeah, I, thanks for joining. I'm flattered you invited me to, go, uh, to uh, address the uh, people who are listening. Yeah. So David, you've known um Dr. Parker for a while. Um yeah. tell us, tell us um tell us how you got to know her and also um how she's helped you. Okay. I this started back in 2021 when I woke up and my knee, my right knee was just driving me crazy. I couldn't uh, I could hardly walk. Uh getting in and out of a car was uh, a challenge. Going up and down stairs was a challenge. Getting out of a chair was even worse than that. Came to see you, Dr. Havert. You gave me a bunch of exercises to do, which was fine. And my personality is I'm impatient. And uh, I tried to, uh, the exercises were working, but uh, my uh, personal trainer said, why don't you go see Dr. Parker? And I, obviously the first thing you go is, oh, needles, my goodness, oh no. <laughs> but I went to see Dr. Parker. She explained everything, uh, what was gonna go on. Two consecutive visits a week apart, my patella tendonitis was gone. So my quality of life increased. But the key thing is I'm in a maintenance mode now. I see uh, Dr. Parker, I uh, used to see her every two weeks. Now it's uh, it's basically up to a month because the pain is gone. So my quality of life is back to where it was and maintenance is important. And I will continue on and on and on. And it, uh, the key is maintenance. It's not a one and done proposition. Mm -hmm. And, that's and David, I yeah, I don't mean to interrupt, but I mean, your knees, I mean, pretty much anybody would take a look at your knees and say, you need a knee replacement, right? Uh, thank you, doctor. Yes. <laughs> <True story. laughs> I'm just, just saying. <laughs> thank you. I, I, please don't remind me that the next time I come in. Thank you. <laughs> but it's working. 
it's working. Yeah. So uh, I think I think it's great, and and I'm really excited, Dr. Parker, to have you share with us some um, alternative ways we can look at um, healing ourselves, um, healing pain, and just you know making a quality of our life a lot better. So um, without further ado, Dr. Parker, Haley, why don't you go ahead and get started? And thank you, David, for that introduction. <laughs> Thank you both for such a wonderful introduction. Um, so little secret. I don't know how David got the nickname Big Dog, but anytime he would come into the office, we would all call him Big Dog. You know, they would come back and they'd say, Oh, Big Dog is here. So um I really I'm have call him by him his that first now. name. Okay. <laughs> I really call him by his first name. So anyhow, I appreciate that introduction from both of you. Um, I'm going to share my screen here. So as, um, Dr. Havert explained, um, I'm here tonight representing Virginia University of Integrative Medicine, and I'll get a little bit more into, um, my part in the school in just a moment, but, uh, we talk about alternative care, but really it's complementary care because what Dr. Havert does for you all, um, is really irreplaceable. And in our society, we need something to intervene stop symptoms, stop pain, stop suffering. But then we also need something that helps give the body that little bit of boost to heal. So how can we use both to optimize quality of life, like David said? So when we talk about that, um, we're going to be talking about what are the systems of the body? What does integrative medicine even mean and look like? And then what can your holistic lifestyle look like, including care from all angles? We know that everything's connected. When you sing that song, like the hip bones connected to the thigh bone, it's all fun and games as you're like sitting there jiggling with like your grandkids or like you're doing your warm up before the, your gym workout. But when you're in pain and everything starts to compensate, that can get really annoying um, and it can get debilitating. Um, and oftentimes we don't even realize how much pain is draining our emotions, how much pain is um, affecting our mood. Uh, maybe even then starting to affect our sleep, starting to affect our relationships, and it then reverberates out how everything can be connected. Um, in addition, everything's connected in the other way. So when things are going well, we're recognizing how like everything in life starts to resonate. Um, so we're essentially fractals and every cell in our body is communicating with the other cells of the body. The power that made the body heals the body. And there's this divine innate intelligence that knows how to do this. Um, it's so complex. We really don't know how to figure it out or measure it. Um, but when everything's communicating with each other at such a rapid rate um, and all tissues are dividing and, and operating under this divine law, we start to recognize that we have this power within our body to heal. Um, this power of interconnectedness goes even further out, outside of our microcosm, and it goes out into the macrocosm between our interrelationships with our friends, our family, um, our, our higher powers. So um, your body's really the tangible aspect of all of these interconnections. And I always tell my students, just remember, your body doesn't speak English, Spanish, Chinese, Korean, whatever language um, you, you, go, you go with. Your body speaks symptoms. Um, and so sometimes the body's trying to get our attention and say, hey, excuse me, wake up. Like, I hurt. Can you help me, please? And if you don't listen to that little bit of a whisper, it starts to scream at you or it finds really clever ways to get your attention. Um, and that's where that compensation aspect comes in. So whether you find like, oh, you're right, you wake up one day and your right knee's hurting and then before too long, so is your left knee, right? It's because you've been compensating over time um, and often like shimmied up the chain. So my questions for you, all of you is, do you guys think that um, health is just purely physical? Knowing that we're all interconnected. And if you think that the body is more than just the physical, then what's in control? Is the body in control of the brain? Is the brain in control of the body? Or it sits somewhere in between? So where does healing start and how would the body even begin to do that? There's so many questions, so that's why I'm here. And that's why Dr. Haver, uh, so so generously had me on her show. <laughs> so as I said, um, I'll get back to this. So I um, currently, um, so Dr. Hubbard did a great job of giving my bio, but uh, over my lifetime, um, I call it my, this lifetime as an acupuncturist, um, I have gotten so inspired on teaching people that they have the ability to heal themselves. Hippocrates, who's the father of uh, medicine, said that doctor, the original word for doctor in Greek is teacher. And we, as doctors, teach our patients. Um, as Dr. Howard agrees, you know, we're not 
just there to help you that day. Like we want to make you better and we want you to actually not come back in to see us because you're living an optimal lifestyle and you're listening to your body. You've learned what your body's saying and how to create a lifestyle to where you can maintain that quality of life. So ultimately when I was working with Palmer Care, I was invited to um, train acupuncturists. Now, probably many of you who have had your educations, you are the best student ever. But when you make that transition out into the real world, there's a really big leap into theoretical um, education and then actual practice. And as Dr. Havard will say, nothing looks like the book. <laughs> so, so with that, we as individual people, we have more than just that one ailment. Typically, we have these cascades that go on and everything, like I said, is interconnected. So how do we in individualize that medicine and how do we tease that out? And how, as a teacher of students who are going on to then be the ambassadors of this medicine, how can I help them make that leap more? So as I spoke about fractals, not only do I like to teach the students, I want to teach my patients, and I really want to help teach everybody that we have this ability and we really all need each other to figure this out. So um, another aspect of why I joined a school is I, I have become very... Um, I call it big in advocacy um, at a state level, at a national level um, to help be an ambassador to this medicine, um, helping people to understand where this fits into our modern healthcare. Um, and the idea of integrative medicine, as Dr. Howard will probably also agree, we all want to practice that. We all understand anyone who works with the body understands that we're kind of a specialist of one facet of how to uh, be a mechanic to the body. Yet, we're so busy with our patients and our day-to-day -day that it's really hard for us to talk to each other. So we need lovely patients like uh, Big Dog over there to uh, make these introductions. And are they're the people who then become the, the ambassadors. Um, so working on more of a national level, um, working with legislation to protect the field, to help different professions be able to have interprofessional dialogue, that's now become my new calling. So um, working with students to then also one day take that baton so I can retire, um, preferably on a beach somewhere. So that's uh, that's giving you a little bit of background. So I'd like to be the first person to invite you, welcome you, as I invite you, um, to our school. Now, um, the school's headquarters is in Vienna, Virginia, uh, right there near the DMV. So if you get really stressed out at the DMV, just pop on over to our school. Um, and as you walk in, our, our clinic is there on the second floor. And we have a student clinic as well as a professional clinic. We have an herbal consultation um, room where the herbs have been um, like dehydrated. You can get formulas, you can get custom made formulas, you can get powders, you can get capsules, you, you name it. Um, so different pricing uh, for the different services that are offered. And ultimately, trying this out. I've never met someone that didn't like acupuncture. I never met someone that regretted having acupuncture. It may not be for everyone, but you do not know until you try. And sometimes the body's just been waiting to create, unlock that chain of events so that all the work that Dr. Havard and her team have done suddenly becomes bioavailable to the body. And suddenly the body goes, ah, I see what you're trying to do. Sometimes the body gets scared. So what acupuncture does is it helps really reset the body. And we're going to get into the science in just a second. But I want you all to think, how would this fit into the current healthcare model? How can we think this would fit for your personal healthcare model? Um, and if you can help to, can, you can help the brain and body connect and start this healing process, why wouldn't you have this fit into the healthcare model? So let's expand on this idea about health. We can all agree at this point, we're interconnected. We can all agree that there are many ways, many spokes on this wheel, right? And health isn't just purely physical. There's also the mental, emotional, there's the financial, there's the social, um, there's the environmental, uh, there's the you know familial. We all know they're part of our environment. So when your wife or husband are stressed out, I mean, by golly, you can feel that too. So remember that there are more things than just the physical. And research shows that over 80% of people with health concerns have a mental or emotional component that also is corresponding. So that means if your primary sy symptom is physical, there's often still an etiology that goes back into the intangible or the mental emotional. Even that means the outlook. So if the brain isn't on your team, if you've been so run down by physical pain, it's really hard to get that wheel spinning in an in a upward direction or in the right clockwise direction. So therefore, we must acknowledge this mental emotional factor that also goes into the definition of health. And I'm sure you all who work with Dr. Havert understand this because she is, in her nature, 
working to give exercises to our patients, working on helping build a lifestyle so you can have a better quality of life. So it's really both and all the interconnections in between at every single cell in the trillions and trillions of cells in your body. Now let's go back to where we started. Where does the healing occur? Where would the root cause be found in the body? And what do you think is the most important system in the body? And as you'll see over here, caution, this is a trick question. <laughs> Everything's really important. Um, we're an integration of these 11 systems. And what I mean by integration is if we're integrating everything, we not only need to block illness, we need to stabilize a pathogen, we need to create an absence of symptoms, but we need to remember when the symptom goes away, it doesn't mean the problem is fixed. It means we now can address the root of the problem or why the body was trying to speak to us and say there was something going on. So when we work together in a medical model, we're trying to get the person out of pain. We're also then trying to promote physical wellness, mental wellness, spiritual wellness, and give the body its ability to express its innate ability to heal itself. So really we need both, right? Um, this process is never static, right? It's on this continuum. So it, I, I did my best to make this a visual because I really like visuals and, and colors. Um, so treating the branch and the symptom helps a lot. But in our modern lifestyle, we sometimes get caught in this loop of just covering the symptom and forgetting to do the deeper work. For instance, changing the diet, drinking water, getting better sleep, going for exercise, right? Changing some environmental factors that maybe really are the root of the stress. So when we can identify what that stressor is or what that root is, how can we make slight modifications to help improve that quality of life? So then over time, that symptomatic maintenance and management can then come down into more of a balanced lifestyle. So this is where we practice integrative medicine. So let's discuss these parts to the whole. We're going to discuss the structure and then get into the function. So I used to work with chiropractors. And part of the reason I used to work with chiropractors is I call that my conversion moment. Between my chiropractor and my acupuncturist um, way back when, um, it really changed my life. And by changing my life, I was inspired to figure out what just happened. Um, and what the chiropractor did is it helped align my body. When, when the bones are slightly out of alignment, um, it's called a subluxation. And what that does is it blocks off that nerve input from the command center or the brain that goes down into the peripheral nervous systems. What that can feel like is um, pain. It can feel like sluggishness of, of uh, organ systems, difficulty breathing. You can start to create some wear and tear on the joints and get arthritis or swelling in these, in these joints. Um, it prevents nerve conductivity. So you can get something called neuropathy. Um, you can have like weakness and muscle tone. So when you have this nerve interference, there are different levels in which that nerve interference will show a different sign and symptom. And this, this uh, picture, which is difficult to really read, is really just indicating what I was talking about as how the inside reflects on the outside and the body speaks to us in symptom rather than English. So if we can adjust the body, then ultimately the symptom goes away. So when we give the body the medicine it wants, ultimately the body goes, oh, thank you. I'll stop bothering you now. <laughs> so, so we know about these bones. Um, we understand that because they're, again, those bones are the very physical, tangible part. So what about the nerves and the muscles? And what about all three, which work together in the human movement system? Or when big dog is doing his lunges around the gym, that's how the brain tells the muscles to flex and contract and the bones are the anchors and the pulleys, and he's able to make it all the way around the gym. So in the integrated medical model, um, we're allowing this innate intelligence to, to run smoothly. If any of you drive around the Northern Virginia area and there's ever one car that's pulled off to the side of the road, do you guys realize how quickly all of those cars back up on all of those different roadways? Similar to the body. If there's ever a blockage, then it seems to back up and backlog in other systems. And the idea behind this is because we're having to consider what that function is or why that's creating that symptom, we have to understand that the body speaks in one plus one is more than two. Or what one of my students said one time, one plus one is 11. <laughs> <laughs> While it doesn't make sense in mathematical terms, it means that the, the whole is worth more than the sum of the parts. Is that, did I say that correctly? I always get that mixed up. So what is traditional Chinese medicine? Now, this is a medicine that was around thousands and thousands of years ago. And it's not just acupuncture, but when someone asks me, what do I do? I typically don't respond, oh, I'm a doctor of oriental medicine, because then I have another series of questions where I have to explain what that is and what all the components are and how does it work. So I typically say, I'm an acupuncturist. There's also herbs, which are like 
um, the natural nutraceuticals or, or the herbal formulas that would be equivalent to um, like pharmaceuticals. Then you have the nutrition therapy. Then you have the manual therapy. So that can be anything from body work, the chiropractic, helping the body to, to realign. And then you have the exercise therapy, whether it's yoga, qigong, tai chi, um, stretching even, um, to get the body back in track and back in its homeostatic set point to where it can better heal itself. So because it's been around for thousands of years, um, there's really proof to it that it works. Um, millions and millions of people have been using it for thousands and thousands of years. But ultimately, this medicine is becoming more mainstream because we're recognizing in our medical system that there's still some holes of where our modern technology cannot quite isolate that healing ability. And our modern technology cannot quite get to that aspect of what makes a person heal on all of those different dynamic levels. Um, so when acupuncture is used to address the whole body as a holistic system, whether it's for sugar cravings and weight loss, improving digestion, detoxifying, whether it's from you know chemicals, hormones, stress, um, bringing you out of that stressful state, that fight or flight, and bringing you into more of a restful, peaceful um, sleep, releasing tension. Ultimately, the body's giving you that, that chance, or excuse me, acupuncture is giving your body that chance to go back into a place where it can operate in its normal parameters. So some of you might look at this chart here and say, oh gosh, I could play tic-tac-toe across that thing. A lot of those may look familiar. And going back to that previous uh, slide, remember we're all interconnected. And so as you have a symptom for a longer period of time, your body will adapt and create another symptom. Um, sometimes you think, oh man, well, you know, I'm just at the age, menopause is normal or menopause, that's the thing too. You know, it's normal. It is normal, but the symptoms don't have to be. And how can we bring your body back into more of a naturally therapeutic window to where your symptoms are manageable and they're not creating havoc on the other areas of your life? So as you, ultimately how we talk about each of you individually is you got to come in for a consultation and we go through a medical history and we figure out what's what's ailing you, what your body's saying, and then ultimately how we tease out your pattern. So yeah, all the time when people ask me like, well, how does it work? Well, well, you should try. What does it feel like? Well, you should try. I always wonder why more people don't try. Um, sometimes uh, people ask me, what well, should I do it? Is it going to work? You know, does it hurt? You know, all those questions. And, and I give you the answer. No, and you got to just try it. All those things. But most of the time they'll come back, even after just their first treatment and say, that was the most unique experience I've ever had in my entire life. Because due to our modern lifestyle, most people even just forget how to relax. So, so when you really have that reset button and we just can, are able to give you that like hour of Zen and peace, it's amazing how much of that body symptom just starts to dissipate or just, it takes the edge off. So I really do. I wonder why more people don't try acupuncture, especially when every single patient will probably circle stress or have a high number on their ranking. Um, and especially when it works with the body's innate ability to heal itself. There are really no side effects except the ones you want. And that is that you get better and your body stops screaming at you. And ultimately it helps Dr. Havertz's treatment plans start to work more efficiently. In fact, it's like an exponential thing that one plus one is 11. It helps the body piece it together a whole lot quicker, whether it's working through the nervous system, getting the brain to connect into the body and so forth. So we just have to get out of our own way. <laughs> and you're talking to me and anyone who knows me says, well, gosh, you're really stubborn. That's really hard for you to do. Even myself, it's hard for me to get out of my own way. So the function, um, we try to give the body the ability to do what it's naturally supposed to do. So let's start talking about what this thing is, the energetic body, okay? How does acupuncture do all these things so naturally? Well, 5,000 years ago, when the Chinese discovered this medicine, they didn't have x-rays or microscopes to know what the nervous system was or the circulatory system was. But they knew when they took these little tiny pins and you put them into the body, metal's conducting and it connects the brain into the body and it starts to create this circuit of helping to communicate back and forth. And what happens is that stimulation doesn't just go locally, but it goes systematically. It releases endorphins, neurotransmitters. It boosts the, the immune system. It helps the circulation. It brings up blood oxygen levels. It ultimately is helping the organ get rid of the gunk and residue that's been backlogged for so long. And ultimately, it's helping the body recalibrate. The Chinese also knew that you're not just a physical body, but you're a mental, emotional, spiritual body. And so it can. the Chinese had a way of recognizing patterns and recognizing how stress would cause damage to certain organ systems. So when the Chinese could 
could see these patterns, they knew a point prescription in which they could pick out that would create like a recipe up there or coding to the brain to then help cascade the right, the right chemicals, neurotransmitters and hormones into the rest of the body to help the body rebalance. So it helps heal from the inside out. So one can even consider this energetic body, the spiritual body, or that innate sense, that higher divine power of the body that naturally can heal itself. So how does this relate back to what the physical body is doing with symptoms and the stuff we learned a long, long time ago in anatomy class? Well, in modern anatomy, like I said, the body doesn't speak English, it speaks symptom. Um, and it's the doctor's job, like Dr. Havert, to read your labs and interpret what the body is saying, Okay. For doctors like myself, we go through a series of uh, 10 questions. We'll palpate these different channels. We'll look at the tongue, which is the only mus muscle we can see on the outside of the body. We'll check pulses and we'll hear what the organs are saying and we'll see where that imbalance occurs. And just like little gears to a clock, if I can find where that weak little gear is and I can tune it up, then the second hand on the clock is going to run a whole heck of a lot more efficiently and you're going to keep time. So as ambassadors of Chinese medicine, how can I help translate what the body's saying? And how can I work with professionals like Dr. Havert to make sure that your body is not only healing from the inside out, but you're able to help perpetuate your quality of life. So with that, let's go into the science of this. Now, I recognize that a lot of you don't have um, the same uh, laborious class hours like Dr. Havert and I do when it comes to chemistry and biology. Uh, so we're gonna take this kind of um, kind of high level, okay? So augmenting the immune system. Like I said, when we put these little teeny pins in, we know that the metal's conducting. So this little teeny pin, and if all of you from your computer right now, take your finger and tap your finger on your hand, that fingernail, you're gonna feel that little tap. That's really what the acupuncture feels like. Acupuncture is a sixth of the size of a hypodermic needle, okay? And thanks to modern technology, that guide tube disperses the free ends of the nerves at the surface of the skin. But when that little teeny needle pierces the skin, that's creating an immune response because something has just like penetrated a barrier. So with that, acupuncture helps to promote like all the immune response, the white blood cells, and it's going to go, hey, we're going to go and we're going to fight off that intrusion. Well, then it realizes this is a sterile little needle and it's not doing any harm, but that's already going through the bloodstream. So this is why acupuncture is so great for allergies, colds, flu. Um, it's great for autoimmune conditions, whether you know, you're, you're having a flare up or we need to re-regulate and build up your immune system. Um, it's great for prevention, especially this time of year. It gets your it gets your immune system up and boosted so you don't have to get sick to then go to the doctor. Endorphin theory. In Chinese medicine, when you put that little teeny pin in, it also is going to excrete um, endorphins and neurotransmitters. Now, we know in, in all of our research that the, the gut is like a second brain. And that's really where all of our, our good feeling chemicals are made. That's where our, our energy is made and where everything gets absorbed back into the body. So when we create the stimulation, the organs respond thanks to that integrative network of how everything's connected. And we're releasing these endorphins and neurotransmitters. Endorphins are so much stronger. I believe like 10 times stronger than morphine. They're not as addicting. So thanks to um, how opioids are so addicting, and a lot of people after surgery or through a really painful period of time, they almost get dependent on these medications Acupuncture can help not only wean you off, but give you an alternative so that addiction and all the complications that come with that are averted. Um, neurotransmitters not only are helpful for any sort of mental health condition, anxiety and stress that we go through all the time up here, um, going through difficult periods of time, whether it's your kids leaving for college or whether it's just like, you know, you're, you're, all the projects are raining on you at the same time. Um, so this accelerates treatments, um, healing ability, because in the meantime, it's stabilizing those symptoms in a natural way, while it gives your body that message to heal from the deeper layers and telling the brain where to go to do that. Um, as I mentioned, neurotransmitter theory, um, helping with sugar cravings, addiction, by the way, sugar is really addicting. I think it, it operates under the same areas of the brain as a uh, cocaine, heroin, some of those really, really harsh drugs. And if you think about it, we are addicted to sugar because it tastes so go gosh darn good. Um, so everyone who is getting acupuncture, sometimes they don't even come in um, with this main complaint of saying, oh, I really need to cut back on my sugar. But they find as they're getting out of their stress cycles and they're becoming more in tune with their bodies, naturally their cravings for sugar and their eating patterns change because their body is going back into a much more balanced and stabilized state. Circulatory theory. 
So this helps with vasodilation, meaning that we're getting more oxygen to an area, but equally we're taking away like inflammation and carbon dioxide and little particles that are backlogged in that blood and we're pulling it out and through. Um, a big side effect of COVID is uh, cardiovascular health. And so acupuncture has been shown to help with the long-term COVID systems, helping with the immune system so we can prevent those colds and flus, but also helping the body to heal. Because the circulatory system, we talk about blood is life, and the circulatory system is really that pathway or that transportation system of where we bring the good stuff to the area that needs it. So say, for instance, um, you have arthritis in your knee. You know, if your, your knee is so swollen that we can't get oxygen and nutrients to that area for that tissue repair, that knee stays swollen, which is really the body's way of trying to help you out. That swelling creates kind of a little padding and it's the first step in what's called um in that in the inflammatory response is the first step in the healing cycle but if it stays in that state that inflammation can start to really irritate those tissues even more so if we can help to push that through and we can bring what your body needs your body then knows how to do the do the work it's kind of like a construction site with no construction workers or a construction site with no with no building materials you need a little bit of all of it so that the body can do what it needs to do so that's really effective in treating pain and also get promoting that healing cycle. Um, gait control theory, one of my favorite. Now, because I worked with athletes so much, a lot of my athletes, uh, you know, gave me job security because really they were just coming to get treated so that they can get back out there and go and compete. And what I mean by that is there, our day-to-day -day lives have a lot of repetitive motion. And what happens because of neuroplasticity or the way that the brain makes new connections or synapses is they, it creates patterns. So we don't have to devote so much energy into learning a new trick, especially old dogs or big dogs. So anyway, when we when we make these patterns, our body almost has like reflexes of how it operates or compensation chains along these um, these fascial planes that run through our body. Now, with that, the body wants to do everything it can to help us out. So when you're in pain, everyone pretends you're in pain. Notice how you tense up and kind of guard, right? So the body in pain will subtly start to tense up and guard to try to stabilize joints or make sure that that pain doesn't continue to progress. Well, with that, that can start to throw off other factors in the body. So when you put these little teeny pins in, it kind of creates a reset for the nerve and it sends information back up into what's called the central nervous system to help remap that part of the body. So you can even sense different patterns and pain in the body. Remember, it's a two-way system and the brain and the body are interconnected. So sometimes it's, it's efferent, sometimes it's afferent messaging, but it's helping to recalibrate the nervous system. This is great for that, that um, effect. I call it the tug of war effect, where I'll push on you and you'll flinch up. You know, sometimes my, my solution to most things is, well, just put a needle in it, right? Get that sucker to calm down. So ultimately, the strength of the integrative healthcare model is to use a little bit of both. Um, in a very, very broad sense, Western medicine is great for intervention. We are so lucky to be a part of a country that has such amazing technology um, and we have it available to us at our fingertips. With that, that's really great for emergency care. And you got to use the right tool for the job. I always make a joke like, you know, if, um, well, I have a small little toolbox, right? It has like a hammer, a screwdriver, right? And then uh, went to my students, I'm like, yeah, but if I had to cut down a tree, would I use a spoon? And all of them look at me like, you are kind of ditzy, Dr. Haley. And then it's like, well, no, I'd use a knife, right? And then I'm like, no, I wouldn't use a knife. I'd use a chainsaw. And then I was like, no, to be honest, I just call my brother or my dad. So, so anyway, you got the tool for the job. But anyhow, it's I, I go back to that analogy because when I look at my little teeny toolbox and I have like my one screwdriver that is good enough for me, if I look in my brother's toolbox, he has like 15 screwdrivers, right? Because like good mechanics and good... um. People who fix things, they they know it's not the skill of the person who's fixing it. They know that they have the right tools to do. It. So anyhow, we're going for that emergency care, the right tool for the job. And if you have an internal bleed, if you have a broken bone, if you have, you know, you're going into cardiac arrest, that needs emergency intervention. We cannot talk about prevention. We need to get you stabilized. We want to get symptomatic relief and we want to get your body back into a place where then we can begin the healing. Okay, so traditional Chinese medicine is really supposed to be practiced preventatively, like Hippocrates said, okay, in teaching the patient how to take better care of themselves, how to work with their other doctors and be able to prevent those emergencies from occurring. 
Ultimately, we want long-term relief by getting the body to heal from the inside out and helping the, body, the person to have better quality of life. So what does this sound like? This sounds like adding in acupuncture, adding in chiropractic, adding in your massage, getting some stretching classes, going and doing exercise, doing some meditation, talking with Dr. Havard about your nutrition. And don't forget to make sure that you have community wellness too. Going and, and joining new clubs, right? Being a part of activities, um, talk, calling up old friends, seeing your family regularly, because that's really a big aspect of making sure that you're balanced. So it's best when used together. And let's just remember what balance looks like and feels like. Um, let's also remember that your body has this wisdom um, and it knows how to bring balance back to us, right? And we just have to listen. And by now we know that our mental, emotional perspectives also play into our health. And so we need to also address those areas of our health too. Just because you're free of physical symptom and ailment doesn't mean that you're balanced and well. So if we can remember that we're multidimensional beings, we're able to make sure that we stay really in tune with where we are in our relationship to the cosmos and that we're all interconnected and we're doing our best to continue to perpetuate through this lifetime. So we know that the physical body and the energetic bodies um, are connected and the physical is connected to the energetic. Um, and let's make sure that, you know, we, we give ourselves a lot of credit, right? We often don't give ourselves that validation or that, you know, high five ourselves in the mirror. Um, to remember how much our body really is doing for us every single day. We take for granted that we can blink. We take for granted that we can hear. We take for granted that we can uh, talk without coughing, right? Um, and this is really the amazing aspect of being human and how much our body is doing for us every single day on so many subconscious levels. So um, in summary, um, we are mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, integrated beings. We have both that physical body that's tangible, but also that energetic body that's that's working amongst it. And we want to use, start to use and incorporate more integrative modalities to prevent illness and stay well. Or what I like to call is actually practice healthcare, not sick care. So ultimately, I hope today helped bring a little bit of a bridge to your understanding of how your healthcare model can look and a little bit more on what an integrative perspective would look like for your own healthcare regimen. I would in encourage you to come in and try acupuncture with us or any of our students at the student clinic. Um, they do need enough numbers to graduate and they're all fabulous practitioners because they are um, supervised by, by um, a licensed professional. Um, we do have locations in both New Jersey and Georgia and they're expanding quicker than I can keep, keep a finger on um, because everyone's having their conversion moments and they're realizing that there's more to their body than what they may be read in a textbook in their anatomy class. So please come in and try it for yourself. The best way to know is to try um, and ultimately see that you too have the ability to heal yourself. So if there are any questions or any realizations, I would love to talk them over and take as much more time as we have here today. So I look forward to seeing you. Um, hopefully some of you I know in the audience are current patients. Um, and I really do appreciate David giving his testimonial on how he just gave it a try because what did he have to lose other than his symptoms? So thank you so much, Dr. Haverty. Thank you so much for listening. And I'll look forward to working with all of you soon. Wow. Okay. Thank you. I, I have, I have a thousand questions, but I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to, first of all, I just want to go to the chat. So everybody um, that we covered a lot of information and it was, it was actually a lot of mind blowing information. So if you have questions, comments, like Dr. Parker was saying, realizations, you know, and anything that's come up, put that in the um, put that in the chat, and we'll we'll get to it. Um, I want to start by just say, um, kind of reading through one thing in the chat here. Um, Haley, um, Patrice wrote, "I feel as though these images, such as the body systems, the anatomy and physiology, and the content of the presentation, will help me communicate my symptoms better and be able to make clearer connections. Let's open this up and make and uh, make clear connections about what I'm feeling. In other words, the symptoms, where the symptoms are manifesting them in, themselves in my body, and think more specifically about which area the body needs attention." So I think I, that, that that's a great comment. I'd love um, to comment on that comment. Yeah, I so, know. Do it. Yeah. You know, so, so often, and now my, remember Dr. Haver and myself, we're also patients too, right? And so sometimes I think when I've been a patient and I've just, I felt myself stuck on trying to even find the words to articulate what I'm feeling to, to be able to help my doctor understand what I'm even asking. And, and I go to the professional who knows better than I do. 
And sometimes not being able to put my finger on what it is, like I feel very trapped in my body. Um, and then there's also this aspect of, you know, you are the expert of your body because you've lived in it every single day since you've been on this earth. And um, you know your body better than anybody. And so when you're feeling something and and perhaps like say your your labs come back and they look fine, but you just know something's not right. I'm encouraging you to trust that instinct and trust that innate wisdom of your body. And it doesn't need to be aggressive or forceful, or you don't need to tell your doctor that they're wrong, but you just continue to like, remember that your body has this intelligence and you go back in and you say, yeah, just something's not quite right. Sometimes that night might not be the doctor for you. Right. And that's where we work as teams to where your doctor can refer you to somebody that may be able to better understand what you're talking about. But please always trust your body because um, we, we forget that we were all given this ability to, to interpret our body, but we just lost that gift of interpretation because we weren't, we weren't um, in language classes for bodies, you know, growing up. So I think that that is something that is very important and particularly bring in that mental, emotional aspect, bring in those other symptoms that go along with your illness will help flesh out the picture for your doctors better so they can better understand and really triangulate what's what's um, being affected when you go in and see them. Yeah, that's great advice. And, you know, and I would hope also, um, you know, also, you know, to be, you know, willing to talk about, you know, emotional and, you know, things that are coming up stress that, that is such, it has such a powerful impact on, on our health. So, but I would also hope that your doctor or your um, practitioner would be asking those questions for you. And if you wonder why we sometimes ask about stress or ask about how things are going and, you know, you know, do, do screens for anxiety and depression is because we know that that impacts your physical health so much. Um, and I, just to comment, like, I always tell my patients, you are more than your labs. Right. So patients, I mean, my job is as a doctor is to come in. You're telling me some, you know, in, trained in traditional Western medicine to, you know, find, find, you know, make sure that there's nothing that is dire, that nothing that's going to, you know, really hurt your mortality or hurt you. But, you know, sometimes and the other thing I say to my patients a lot is uh, we'll find out what this isn't before we find out what it is. And so it is sort of like detective work and trying to kind of go through down that path. But that's why I think it's so great. And I love using um, other um, modalities, other um, pr practitioners who have been trained in other, um, you know, um, practices in order to help me create kind of a better quality of life for everybody or help you create because ultimately you're doing it for yourself. But we're just we're just there for the consultations anyway. Right. Um, yeah. So I can stop though, talking to that, to that to that point as well, um, you know. We are here for our patients and I love working with other medical professionals because sometimes we in practice are seeing something so much that we, our lenses start to, to focus in on certain aspects. And so when I work in collaborative clinics or I work with other professionals at um, the school, I sometimes cross-check myself and it keeps me on my toes a bit and, and, or helps explain that next layer deeper. And that's where patients are really the most education that we really get. And that's why we call it a practice of medicine is because each person is still, even if we've seen a condition a hundred thousand times in our practices, that person is still a unique individual. And so bringing up the factors that exacerbate the condition, whether it's stress or emotions, or, you know, it's something like it's, it's now spilling over into not sleeping. So, so important for helping to give you the best kind of care that you need. So I, I, I think that all of us who are in medicine understand how interconnected that is, even mm -hmm. though you're, that a patient's coming in for a very specific thing, there's always so much more in that accordion file we have to expand. No, and I love what you said about the interconnectedness, just in general, just, you know, within terms of the practice of medicine as a whole, but also the interconnectedness of everything that's going on in our bodies. And, and I really hope that there's going to be a time where we can all sort of come together and <laughs> work together, because I also feel like there's there's sometimes some pushback between, you know, integrative medicine and traditional medicine and naturopathic medicine and everything. And it's, and it's really a shame that we don't trust each other more and want to work with each other more. And I think newer generations of doctors um, are, are opening up. They're getting more classes in school of what, of how these different modalities can ultimately improve patient outcomes and, um, and effectiveness. Um, there is also an element though, of just it is our duty to continue to be educators and teachers because, you know, if our patients are coming to us, they're so consumed with their concerns, they don't realize how much these other lifestyle factors can can help alleviate that um that extreme stressor 
that mm-hmm. that's giving our body the problem. And so I do believe, and I'm very, very optimistic and hopeful, but I do believe that over time, we we really understand the, the importance of doing everything together as far as there are enough sick people out there. Like we, we are going to be busy as it is. You know, we saw what happened during COVID where we had more people sick than our hospitals can handle, right? So it, to know that we can be those doctors that, that are able to help our patients prevent that illness and then ultimately teach each other. For instance, um, the audience here tonight, knowing that this is something that's out there, perhaps it might not be the thing for you, but you have it in your back pocket. And maybe your friend will say, oh, I've just been really struggling with these tight shoulders. And you'll say, you know, have you ever tried acupuncture? I just heard this talk. And that's how, you know, things work in very uh, mysterious ways. And and there's always like little divine interactions that go on. So knowing that it's out there and having education that there are tools out there that could help is the first step in understanding how to create that integrative environment. Yeah. And open-mindedness too, which I think is, 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 yeah. is key too. So um, in the chat also, um, oh, can you, let's see, cupping. Um, a lot of, I, I hear that, you know, there's a lot of athletes that are using it. You see, you know, athletes on the field, um, you know, with, with cupping, can you speak a little bit to that specifically? Sure. So cupping is another modality. And so um, it's within the scope of acupuncture practice. It's been in Chinese medicine since the dawn. Um, it's kind of, I like to explain it as it's like a reverse massage. So sometimes those muscles get so tight because they're trying to protect you or they've been really worn down to where, you know, the body just like glitches, right? And it like seizes up. Um, so with the cupping, the cupping sort of just suspends those different layers of muscles that glide across each other. And it helps like create... Um, it pushes blood flow into that area. Now in the in the time that the cup's on there, it creates a bit of a suction. So it creates a bruise. Typically the bruising is going to be far more dark in the area that has the least amount of circulation because it was able to get trapped in that cup. But then when we release the cup, it pushes that blood flow through and it ultimately is stimulating that bruise to heal. And it's, and it's helping then echo that into the body of helping that underlying tissue heal. So I usually, um, and along with a few of my colleagues, specifically Dr. Yona, she specializes in dry needling and a lot of orthopedic conditions, Um, but she'll use cupping and acupuncture to help release the nerve as well as promote that um, tissue healing and get the circulation into that area. So I find as many acupuncturists do, the more modalities you use together, the quicker the body learns a new trick. It goes, oh, okay, we're really trying to release this muscle and we're telling the brain that it needs its attention. Um, so the cupping itself is a great modality. You can use just the cupping, um, but also using it with the needles adds that exponential effect. Now I'm biased because I'm an acupuncture. So I'm always going to recommend acupuncture with your cupping, um, but it can be used separately. And there are often cupping sets. If you, if you are um, super adventurous, your acupuncturist can help teach you where to put your cups and you can um, do some self-care in between your appointments. So how was that Dr. Havoc? Any no, that's great. Thought? Yeah. And so when you go in for an appointment, um, I think somebody asked that actually, can you put in the chat, the actual um, physical location? Oh, of, sure. I think the Vienna one is probably the one that's closest to us, right? The Vienna yes, location. ma'am. Yeah. If you could just put it in that chat, that would be great. But when you go for a consultation and you say, because you may not know what you want, what you need, right? But so if you just go and say, these are my symptoms, I mean, the person who's doing the consultation will be able to make recommendations as far as what you need. You don't have to go there knowing this is what I'm going to get, right? No, typically a patient will come in with a main complaint, you know, like similar to you, Dr. Harper, they'll come in for, you know, Mm -hmm. they're, they're coming into a doctor because they're having a concern. Now I do have patients that come in and and they're there just because they want to try it out. Totally fair. And either way we go through an intake, we see their medical history and we go through an intake because I don't know if you've ever uh, heard of the book, the body keeps the score. It's it's a, it's a a really clever book. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. But we're an accumulation of all of our lifetime. We're accumulation of all of our memories. I don't know if any of you have ever like gotten sick and like your injuries become canaries and, the, and like, you know, the shoulder that you fell on and the ice last winter suddenly gets to be the weak one or, you know, your ankle that you sprained when you were a kid playing soccer suddenly starts to act up. You know, those I call them the canaries because they're the ones that start squawking first. So with that, a Chinese medical practitioner will go through your intake and see what your body's speaking in pattern. 
Um, and then they go through the 10 questions, you know, your sleep, your energy, your mood, your digestion, and so forth to understand how the interconnections are working in the body. Um, so whether you have a main complaint or not, it's amazing at how much starts to come up in an intake. And if you're anything like me, I think I'm a relatively healthy person who practices preventative medicine. And anytime I fill out an intake, I start to get a little bit shy because I'm like, holy smokes, I didn't know I had so much going on. So, so with that, it, they're more little indicators of where to look and how can we better help balance the body? Because again, you're human. Sickness is normal. Injuries happen. But how can we better keep you well? And then if you do get sick, how can we help your body exponentially heal back to normal? Yeah. And I think I was, you know, pain is sort of an interesting. I mean, when you really kind of start to peel back the layers of the onion, like what is pain? And I love what you're saying about just it's it's your body's way of communicating with you. Right. And so sometimes but the communication sometimes gets a little out of hand. Um, you know, and so, yeah, and, and there's other things like emotional components that can lead to that. And I think they probably speak to that a little bit too in the body keeps score about, you know, kind of chronic pain also. Right. And I, I just uh, caught the next chat yeah. about talking about posture. So, oh yeah, you know, so uh, without going too detailed into your specific case, because without an assessment, you know, it's hard to, to say specifically for you, um, the muscles operate under, you know, synergists, antagonists, protagonists, you know, they're like a pulley, a lever and pulley system. So sometimes when we, we overstretch the back muscles due to our lifestyle, you know, where our hands are forward on a computer, we're texting, we're reading, we're steering at the steering wheel. Um, our, sh our anterior muscles shorten. Now that's that whole thing of they're compensating for your posture and they're adapting or they're evolving. Any of you ever seen those pictures of like the monkey that starts to walk on two feet and then it starts to evolve back into this little hunchback? You know, it's a joke on modern lifestyle because everything we do is anteriorly forward. So with that, when you go to your physical therapist, they typically work on, on, on strengthening your back muscles, helping like retract your shoulder blades and pull them down while at the same time stretching out your front pec muscles. Um, and, and helping then also, you know, release the neck, the front like scaling areas and help strengthen um, those neck flexors. So with that, typically when you're feeling pain, pain is the last symptom to come and it's the first thing to go. But that deeper constitutional treatment takes a little bit more layering. And that's why physical therapy regimens or say even acupuncture regimens or say even taking your prescription medicine, it never just works on the first treatment or the first pill. You, it's an accumulative process of helping to retrain the body and getting that to be the new habit. And like David said, you know, it's, it's not a one-off thing, but it doesn't mean you need to come in every week for the rest of your life. It means we need to stabilize you. And then we want to stay ahead of the problem because most likely your modern lifestyle isn't going to change. We're still going to sit in traffic and grip the steering wheel. We're still going to have to work our job you know, hopefully you can telework and be on a beach, but like, you know, we're still going to be sitting at our computer. Uh, Dr. Haver and I, we're still leaning over patients as much as we know about this stuff. I mean, I'm one of the worst. I'm like this all day long. So how can we start to make lifestyle modifications to where we can help recalibrate and balance that out? Well, at the same time, getting our treatments to make sure that our body doesn't go back into that old pattern that's been established over repetitive um, insult over, over many years of doing the wrong thing. Did that help you help um, clarify a bit? I think I think so. Um, and it, it just kind of along the lines, you know. So can can you speak a little bit to how this can help? I mean, so there's the acute injuries, right, or or the, the thing that's been around for a little while. What about chronic things like chronic back pain or fibromyalgia, say, or my, you know, I don't know, just something or migraines that you know that are just constantly coming. Absolutely, those are great questions. So. In a way, acute's easy, uh, but also in a way, chronic can be easy because sometimes it just hasn't used the right tool for the job, right? And if, and if say, you have um, a physical block, like say the bones have started to like kink up or the muscles have spasmed and you, and you have a physical like pinching of a nerve, like oftentimes we see a sciatica type presentation where the nerve that goes all the way down the leg has interference along its pathway. No matter how much pain medicine you take, until we remove that physical blockage, that won't go away. So a lot of people come into my office with chronic pain because they weren't using the right tool for the job. So even if, say, I'm not the right tool for the job, um, not to say I'm a tool, but you know, but to, to, as far as like if acupuncture is not the right tool for the job, then at least through that assessment 
And by the experience of working with integrated professionals, we can guide you in that way. And oftentimes it's chiropractic, physical therapy. It's working more, you know, we see what's called red flags or alarm signs and we send them back to their primary care. But when you talk about uh, chronic issues such as arthritis, low back pain, um, ailments that often tend to hit us later on in life um, that wear and tear and accumulate over time. Um, acupuncture, again, is interconnected. So sometimes that symptom can be presented with a lot of different patients, but due to various different causes. So each patient has to be evaluated on an individual basis of the etiology of where their, their uh, problem came from. But then in addition to that, sometimes it's a matter of helping them more with blood flow. Sometimes it's a matter of helping them more with hydration into those joints and tissues to help build up the cushion between the joint. Sometimes it's helping to intervene so that wear and tear and say osteoarthritis doesn't get so bad and it slows that, that wear and tear down to where their medical professional says, you know, if you're not feeling any pain, why don't we delay a surgery? And the longer you delay a surgery, you know, technology only continues to get better. So ultimately it's, it's a way in which you're working with your body. I tell all of my patients, it's better to intervene sooner rather than later. Um, a rule of thumb in classical Chinese medical texts is the longer you have an issue, just expect that it didn't come overnight. So it probably won't be healed overnight. So the more you delay and procrastinate your health, the, the longer it's going to take to unravel those complications, but it can be done. And I'm a little bit of a moderate when it comes to medical intervention, because there are many cases that can be treated with acupuncture. And if my patients solely, excuse me, I inform them, they make their best, um, they make their best decision for their body, knowing what's at, what's at hand. Then I work with them in whatever capacity they'd like. Sometimes I work with their doctor, or sometimes we give a full on attack on treating this situation and try to steer the ship back around. So it really depends on the case. And that's one of the most annoying answers you can ever hear of, well, it depends, but because it's an individualized medicine, yeah. there's so many factors that go into helping those conditions. Yeah. And just to speak on fibromyalgia for a brief second, yeah. um, fibromyalgia, we, we spoke earlier about how the body speaks in symptom, but the physical body is really the most tangible aspect of the body. And oftentimes with fibromyalgia, there's maybe some underlying emotional um, blockage. Well, and we all are human beings that have, um, you know, a, 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 an emotional memory. So sometimes these emotions that weren't fully processed have now been harbored in the body and that's preventing pure functioning of the body. So if we can help address some of those stagnations, then it alleviates the physical symptoms. Patients like that, um, with chronic illness typically become more self-aware of their body. And then they start to adapt their lifestyles to where they don't push themselves to that point where they have a flare up or, or they don't expose themselves to triggers. Migraines, same conversation. Is it due to hormonal reasons? Is it due to allergies? Is it due to posture? Is it due to a car accident that was never fully expressed and um, rehabilitated, right? So there again, diving into the etiology and then working with the body in the way that it needs for that individual to help uh, a treat, not just the symptom, but also untangle the root of the problem. It's so yeah, we could we could talk another hour about this, Lise. Um, one more final question before we wrap things up. Um, question: How how much does fascia affect acute and chronic pain? Very good, good question. question. And yep. I I think this is just the perfect question to wrap it up. So oh, great. So you know, if you can consider that this medicine is thousands of years old, the Chinese probably didn't know how to untangle these different tissues. So there's a lot of research done now of where fascia is very conducting and it can actually create its own electricity. And because fascia wraps around every organ and it's within, it's within every tissue of the body, um, fascia is actually seen as what these ch Chinese channels are. So when this is something that I, I work with my students on is we sometimes are actually talking about the same thing. We're just using different words to mm -hmm. explain it. And when I'm talking to say a neurologist, I'm talking more with the neurology and how that plays in the, the, the conductivity or the condition. When you're talking with somebody who understands, um, you know, say a personal trainer or they understand the mechanics of the body, you're talking more in that way. But the fascia is really that consistency across the board because we're dealing with the same human body. So um, to answer your question, it, it plays in completely to acute and chronic pains. Um, and this is where I go back to that uh, saying of, 
choosing the right tool for the, for the job. A lot of my patients also are simultaneously getting myofascial release massage. Some of my patients are also simultaneously getting physiotherapy. Some of my patients just really don't like chiropractors. They don't want to go there, but then they do a combination of a couple other things. You know, I always go back to the analogy of recipes. Your body's going to require a different recipe and what your body responds to. Really, we don't know and we don't have a rule of thumb for that because each person's an individual. So the best way to know if it works for you is to try and to see if it's something that even helps spur a healing reaction to make your other treatments start to work even better. So sometimes people come in just for an acupuncture treatment and all of their years of working with their physiotherapist or doing their exercise suddenly click, you know, mm -hmm. or vice versa. They'll be working with me as an acupuncturist and suddenly they go to a chiropractor and all of that biorhythm goes right back into place. It really depends on the person. And um, as Dr. Havert says, you know, you know your body best and you have to be an advocate for your body and recognize that we're all here to help you and we'll try to our best we can to refer out to the patients and, or excuse me, the practitioners that we think are the best in line to be a part of your medical team. Wow. Thank you so much. I, I, I again, I could probably keep talking about this, um, but we probably need, we, well, we, I know we do need to wrap up because it's after eight o'clock and um, I, Dr. Parker, this has been phenomenal. I, it, this is just such a great, it's like, it's just a glimpse into um, you know, what, what's possible. And I think, you know, whether it's Eastern medicine, Western medicine, I mean, we're all here to um, alleviate suffering. Absolutely. Patients, I mean, whether it's it, emotional suffering, physical suffering, but I think it's, it's just, it's just wonderful that we can come together and be that for our patients. We did. We have a calling to become physicians because we want to help people, you know, do no harm, but also help promote healing. And, and, you know, there's, there's a, there's a something in it that for us too, right? We, we, we feel a sense of purpose and we feel so much better knowing our patients are getting better. And so when we can help them find the tools that work for them, it's such great gratification. Um, but I invite all of you, please check out the website. Um, please write a Google review. If you like this presentation, please share this video with your other physicians, care team, friends, family, um, and hopefully you can help your friends and family and your community also uh, create more healing amongst each other because they're part of your environment and that's a big stressor and factor in helping keep your balance. Absolutely. And there will be, um, there's a few questions about whether or not this will be available. It has been recorded. Um, we'll make it available um, both, you know, to, to anyone, NVFP, um, Dr. Parker, you'll be getting your copy of it and you can share it amongst your um, your um, peeps. And um, yeah, so yeah, please spread, um, keep keep talking, keep um, keep uh, healing, keep talking about all this. And, um, and you know, just thank you so much, um, Dr. Parker, for being here. Thank you to everybody who um, who attended. And um, we will see you um, next time at our next town hall. I look everyone. forward to it. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. And thank you All for right. joining us. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Good night, everyone.